Hello and welcome to Celebrate Aging. Today I have Ethel Hallock with me and we are going to share a Christmas memory uh, from a little bit of time ago, back when Helen, or Helen was four, her sister, and Ethel was about how 13. About 13 years old going to school. And when Helen was four and Ethel was 13, there was a Christmas program about to be had and the teacher didn't want Helen left out even though she was four, right? And so she had Helen learn a little poem too. Why don't you share that poem with us, Ethel? Old Saint Nick is short and thick, so I've been told by Ma. But I saw him, he's tall and thin and looks just like my Pa. <laughs> so little Helen said that without a hitch, didn't yeah, she? right. <laughs> she was only four years old. Yeah. Well, now years later, there's a much longer poem that Ethel uh, learned, and she's going to share it with us. And now you're you're not in high school anymore. <laughs> what is your age, Ethel? I'm 97 in January. 97 in January. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty close. January what? 29. Oh boy, pretty soon we're going to have the big birthday. But right now we're going to have Ethel share this poem with you. Annie and Willie's Prayer. It was the night before Christmas, good nights had been said, and Annie and Willie had crept into bed. There were tears on their pillows and tears in their eyes, and each little bosom was heaving with sighs. For tonight their stern father's command had been given that they must retire precisely at seven instead of at eight, for they troubled him more with questions they heard of than ever before. He said he thought this delusion a sin, no such creature as Santa Claus ever had been. And he hoped after this he should never more hear how he can scamper down chimneys with presents each year. And that is the reason that two little heads so restlessly tossed in their soft downy bed. Eight, nine, and the clock in the steeple told ten. Not a word had been spoken by either till then. And Willie saw a face from the blanket did creep and whispered, Dear Annie, is oo fast to see? Why, no, Brother Willie, a soft voice replied. I've long tried in vain, but I can't shut my eyes. For somehow it makes me so sorry because dear Papa has said there is no Santa Claus. Now we know that there is, and it can't be denied. For he came every year before Mommy died. But then I've been thinking that she used to pray, and that God in heaven would hear everything Mama would say. Then why can't we pay just as Mama did then? and asked God to send him with peasants again. Well, I've been thinking so too, and without a word more, four little bare feet bounded out on the floor. Four little knees, a soft carpet pressed. Two tiny hands were clasped close to each breast. Now, Willie, you know you must firmly believe that the presents you asked for, you're sure to receive. You wait very closely till I say the amen, and by that you will know that your turn has come then. Dear Jesus, look down on my brother and me and grant us the favors we're asking of thee. I want a wax dolly, a tea set and ring, and an ebony workbox that shuts with a spring. Bless Papa, dear Jesus, and help him to see that Santa Claus loves us as much as does he. Don't let him get fretful and angry again at dear brother Willie and Annie, amen. Well, Peace, Jesus, that's Santa Claus come tonight and bring us some peasants before it is I. I want it should give me a nice little set with bright shiny honors and all painted ed, a box full of tanny, a book, and a toy. Amen, and then Jesus, I'll be a good boy. Their prayers being ended, they raised up their heads, and with hearts light and cheerful, again, sought their beds. They soon must in slumber, both peaceful and deep, and with fairies in dreamland were roaming in sleep. Eight, nine, and the clock in the steeple told ten, ere the father had thought of his children again. He seemed now to hear Annie's half-suppressed sigh and to see the blue, big tears stand in blue, Willie's blue eyes. I was harsh with my darlings, he mentally said, and should not have sent them so early to bed. But then I was troubled, my feelings found vent, for bank stock today has gone down ten more percent. But then they've forgotten their troubles ere this, and that I denied them the thrice asked for kiss. But just to make sure, I'll steal up to their door. To my darlings, I never spoke harshly before. 
So saying, he ascended the stairs and arrived at the door to hear both of their prayers. His Annie's blessed papa drew forth a big tear, and Willie's grave promise fell sweet on his ear. Strange, strange, I'd forgotten, he said with a sigh. How I longed when a child to have Christmas draw nigh. But I'll atone for my harshness, he mentally said, by answering their prayers ere I sleep in my bed. So I turned to the stairs and went, softly went down, threw off velvet slippers and silk dressing gown, donned hat, coat, and boots, and was out in the street, a millionaire facing the cold, driving sleet. Nor stopped he until he had bought everything, from the box full of candy to the tiny gold ring. Tis true he kept adding so much to the store that the various presents outnumbered a score. Then homeward he turned with his holiday load, and with Aunt Mary's help in the nursery was stowed. Miss Dolly was seated beneath the pine tree, beside a table spread out for her tea. A workbox well filled in the center was laid, and on it the ring for which Annie had prayed. A soldier in uniform stood by a sled with bright shining runners and all painted red. There were balls, dogs, and horses, books pleasing to see, and birds of all colors were perched in the tree. And Santa Claus laughing stood up in the top as if getting ready more presents to drop. As this the fond father the picture surveyed, he thought for his trouble he'd amply been paid. And he said to himself, he brushed off a tear, I've been happier tonight than I've been for a year. I've enjoyed more true pleasure than ever be so poor. What care I if bank stock falls 10% more? So saying, he quickly extinguished the light and tripping downstairs, retired for the night. As soon as the brains of the bright morning sun put the darkness to flight and the stars one by one, two, four little blue eyes out of sleep open wide and at the same time their presence they spied. And out of their bed they sprang with a bound. The very guests prayed for were all of them found. They laughed and they cried in their innocent glee and shouted for Papa to come quick and see the presence old Santa had left in the night just the things that they'd wanted and left before light. And now I'd added, added Annie in a voice soft and low, you believe there's a Santa Claus, Papa, I know. While dear little Willie climbed up on his knee, determined no secrets between them should be, and told in soft whispers how Annie had said, their dear blessed mama, so long ago dead, you should kneel down and pray by the side of her chair, and that God in heaven had answered her prayer. Then we dot down and paid just as well as we could, and Dot answered our prayer. Now wasn't he good? And that's the poem of Annie and Willie, and it reminds us that even in this crazy economy where the stock might be falling 10%, God is still good, and God hears prayers. We wish you the most blessed New Year's. <laughs>